What's up guys? You are on the air and off the books with Beth Ann and Samantha. And today we are coming to you with some crazy stuff. I think so. Yeah. Well, We've Samantha got is for sure. Yeah. I don't yeah. This I read you a Karen to, Slaughter book, okay? You're trying to get me to read some craziness and I don't appreciate it. Yeah, I read a Karen Slaughter book. I really thought she was like just like a, you know, murder mystery, like, oh, like the Josie Quinn series or like, you know, something very tame. Uh, yeah. No, absolutely not, ma'am. I like got a fourth through this book and then it was like, bam. And face. I passed out, died. Came back to life. Came back to life for this podcast. Um, just for you guys. Yeah, so it was Pretty Girls, and I've been seeing, like, the cover and all that everywhere, and I had just so happened that I had bought it, like, on sale at Books A Million, I think. Um, I've seen it as well. I think it released in 2015. Yeah, so it released almost 10 years ago. Um, But that is what I read, and I am also reading... um, I finally started, you guys are going to be so proud of me, I finally started my tandem read. Insert applause. Um, Tandem read of Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Moss. Um, I am on chapter three. I still started, so don't don't be laughing at me, okay? It's still still happening. Bethann, just... Just keep my giggles to myself. (laughs) Just... You just can't. I can't vision. You don't, I don't see the vision. You I don't, don't have the vision. You don't see the vision here. Okay. Right. I'm not. I'm not. You know the guy. That's fine. So it's it's starting out really good. So I have high hopes. Um, very dreading getting to switch to Tower of Dawn because I am not. You guys know from the last episode, I am not a Kale 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 fan. It's like Carl. Carl. Yeah. yeah so. I am excited to um, really get into this series. Um, I've got approximately... 800 chapters to go. Um, 145 tabs. Good lord. <laughs> so um, I am on chapter 3 of 145. Okay. I... Oh, okay. It's going to be great. Actually, there's probably more chapters than that. That's just when the tab ends. So then I, like, you know, then I don't know. No, that doesn't make sense. There's 145 chapters. There are now. <laughs> yeah. We'll just go with that. It looks crazy when you look at it in person. She has everything, like, numbered out. And you have to carry them together. Yes. And I'm... so it's, like, and they're chunky books anyway. So it looks insane. It's very aesthetic looking. I really appreciate, like, the vibes it's giving. But also, if I had to read it, I think I would cry. You definitely can't do this. Correct me if I'm wrong listeners but you cannot be doing this on ebook because i don't even know how you would i don't know because if have you read these before or are you just reading this way at, like this is the first time that i've read okay. these so, so everybody together yes ev- on my book groups that i'm on everybody's like tandem read them and i'm also that person um that didn't read assassin's blade that you're supposed to read um there's a big fight whether you read it first or like third i think fourth yeah i skipped it don't come for me sjm fans um i might read it eventually but it's <laughs> not it's not in my near future i would say you probably could then because i would say if you have read them already and you went back and you tried to tandem read them on your device it would be hard but i think that if you had the numbers written out on a piece of paper you could flip back and forth that way yeah, that's true, but that's like because a it's lot. It's still chronological in a sense, right? Yeah, but then I have to like look at paper and my screen. It's just easier because you can flip, you have it tab and you can flip right to it. Yeah. On your device, you'd have to search out some things. Yeah. But if you wanted to, if you could do anything if you try hard enough. You can do anything when you put your mind to it. Do it, do it. So those are the two things that I'm reading. Um, what are you reading? I am finishing up. Um, Someone You Can Build a Nest In by John, I think it's Wiswell. It's giving, um... The cover's outstanding. The Yeah, it, it's giving, like, cartoon horror. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I could say that. Uh, yeah. This is this was recommended to me by Justin. Shout out to Justin. Um, he came in, set the book on my desk, and said, I think you'll love this. 
And so his recommendation was that it's kind of giving Murderbot, in a sense, um, this entity that's human, not human, um, tries to navigate a world full of humans with, um, in like their own emotional capacity. And it's great. Um, I will save my, when it's time to do the whole synopsis, blah, blah, blah thing. Cause there's just so much about this book. That's fantastic. I started this book two days ago. You're a good chunk through. Yeah. I'm 30%. Um, so that tells you I am listening to it on Hoopla, um, because the wait on Libby is several months and this is the bestseller I have in my hand, the bestseller, like physical copy that we have in, in stock, in stock, in stock. Um, so you could listen to this book on Hoopla, read this book on Libby, read this book physically in the library so yeah. it's everywhere and i think that pretty girls is also everywhere as well yes um and i am i am gonna talk a little bit about pretty girls because i think the book is too heavy to do a whole podcast on yeah so i will I not be talking about this like for an entire episode um there's not much that i can say because of the topic um, this is something you'll have to seek out for yourself this is the point in the episode where we give you trigger warnings. Yes, trigger warnings, um, sexual abuse, uh, rape, you name it, any kind of... If it goes with that, it's in there, probably. So um, keep that in mind before you guys pick this up. Yeah, um, very graphic murder. This um, is a heavy, huge... I would... You think it's more of a psychological thriller? Yeah. yeah psychological murder mystery yeah kind of it's like i wouldn't say it's necessarily like super there's not like a jaw-dropping twist i don't think but you kind of get like gaslit throughout the entire book of like thinking multiple different scenarios mm -hmm. so i think it did a good job with that i wasn't upset that there wasn't a huge twist i was like I had my suspicions throughout the entire book, and my suspicions were correct, but there was other stuff leading from into it. From what you told me, it's pretty captivating right from the jump. Yeah. Like, it starts out as, like, you know, you're, like, casual murder mystery, and then it's like, hello, we're gonna throw this crazy, crazy, crazy just... Scenario. Yeah, the worst scenario you could possibly think of being in. It's like, you know what? We're going to put that in there. Um, so I'm going to read the little synopsis. Sisters, strangers, survivors. It's been more than 20 years since Claire and Lydia last spoke. Claire is the glamorous trophy wife of an Atlanta millionaire. Lydia, a single mother dating an ex-con, struggles to make ends meet. But neither has recovered from the disappearance of their sister Julia two decades earlier, and the shocking murder of Claire's husband brings the horror and heartbreak of the past roaring back into their lives. The vanishing of a teenage girl and the killing of a middle-aged man, almost a quarter century apart, what could connect them? As they form a wary truce, the surviving sisters unearth the secrets that destroyed their family all those years ago, and find the astonishing truth where they least expect it. Dun, dun, dun. I also think that this book does like a great job of describing like relationships between siblings, especially like when they're not good, just kind of like rekindling that relationship. It did a really good job with that because um, these sisters like absolutely like have not talked in like 20 years. And then this like mystery slash death brings them together and now they're like stuck with each other having to solve kind of two different mysteries at the same time hmm. it's good i think i'm gonna read it it's 432 pages just so you guys know i always look at that first <laughs> but um i flew through I think it. it yeah i think it's gonna move pretty fast i think i um, read it in a day maybe two days oh i believe you you're the fastest reader on this planet. But yeah. You're the fastest reader on this side of the West. I didn't realize that Karen Slaughter, I mean, I should have realized by her name, Karen Slaughter. Okay. <laughs> um, that she was so, like, graphic, and some of her themes are really, like, horrifying. 
She's pretty popular. She's explicit. I will say that. I don't know about her other books, but this book is very explicit. I would not let your teenager read this um, unless you just, like, really trust them with that kind of heavy material. Um, I would suggest it for 18 plus, honestly. Yeah. Maybe, like, even higher than that. Please. It, um, from what you told me, I was kind of, like, shocked. Like, oh, Lord, do I want to read this? Because... You do. I'm a sensitive Sally. You can borrow my and, book. And, uh, I... It's on Kindle Unlimited. I'm not oh, yeah. supposed to advertise that, but if you do have Kindle Unlimited, <laughs> you know, yes. that's an option. I, it's also I on know, Libby. Yes, I just need to make sure there's no holes and stuff on it, because I would like to read it. You know, there if I are pick it up, holes. I want to pick it up. Um... I only know that because Nolan has it on hold. I oh, think is he's he like, to it, it went really fast though. It was like, oh, it's going to be five months. You know, because Libby always gaslights you into thinking that it's going to be like forever. <laughs> Several months later, yeah. So, like, he put it on hold a few days ago and it was like four months. And now it's like, you're the second in line. Well, that's good. Yeah, I'm probably going to, um, I do a lot better when I can listen to it or read it on my device instead of having a physical copy. I just take a long time, so that's just the way that I read. Um, but yes, you guys should go and get it from the, from the library. Give us some circulation stats. Support your local library. We yes. are for you. you know? I'm trying to, because the cover is like um, water, and then there's like a locket falling into the water. Um, I'm trying to remember like what the water has to do with the book, and I'm just like not It's just a pretty cover. I think it's maybe just a pretty cover. I could be totally <laughs> forgetting like an entire... A whole portion of A it, whole portion of the book. blacked out. I blacked out. I read it really fast, too. I probably missed a few details, but, I mean, I you was read so I was in, like, reading shock, and I couldn't stop myself. It just kept going, and my brain was like, me, flatline. <laughs> yeah, so that, uh, I'm definitely going to try to pick it up then. Um, at least get through some of it, see if I can get through some of it. I think Lori, you said Lori and Trisha read it as well, so if you yes. like... The things that they recommend to you, um, or if you speak to them or at all and get your recommendations from them, you will like this book. And she also wrote, Karen Slaughter also wrote Pieces of Her, which is actually a show on Netflix. And she also has the Will Trent, Will Trent. Yeah, series on ABC. on ABC. Yes. So she's written a, quite a few bangers, you know. I would be horrified if this ever got turned into a show. Oh, yeah. This is but, probably. you know, I'd be watching it anyway. I'd be in there like somewhere. Lord. Glued to the screen, mouth hanging okay? open, horrified. Yeah. <laughs> At least it wasn't true crime, guys. Okay, I still, I'm oh. still not recovering from that. Yeah, but it could be. Yeah, that's the crazy part. But it's not. Yeah, but you don't know. It told me it wasn't, so my brain it said told it's me not. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. I just believe the lie. <laughs> this is not the real, real. Um, but yeah. It, I mean, yeah, it, this is definitely something that probably happens, like, to people in real life. It, Which, oh, Especially God. with, like, the, the dark, dark web. web. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's giving dark web vibes. Yes. So dark you web. Like that. It's giving, like, dark web meets hostile meets oh, yeah. criminal minds. Definitely hostile. Yeah. It's definitely giving all of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you guys go. So just uh, put your seatbelt on, be prepared. Buckle up. Buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. Yeah. 10 out of uh, 10, though, you know? Yeah, hostile. Oof. Yeah, I can see that for, for sure. From what yeah. you, you've said to me, which we can't spoil you for that. But you just have to pick it up and read it. Yeah. Just do it. Just do it. And then I don't, I don't know if I'm reading anything else right now. I... Did, I pulled a Beth Ann and I started like 12 books at one time. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, Nelly. Hold on. Put the brakes on. <laughs> Sk- <skirt. laughs> um, I'm, I'm reading a book that I'm not going to talk about on here because it's a little, little sketch. Um, so I'm reading. Yeah, I'm reading that. I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm reading that book. Tower of Dawn, Empire of Storms. Um, I feel like I have also started something else. There's got to be something else. Oh, I'm sure. Maybe not. I got the yawnies today. I'm sorry, guys. Jeez. Oh, I'm also still in the process of convincing myself to read an Emily Henry book. And um, I'm going to start an Abby 
I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I don't know if it's Jimenez or Jimenez. I think it's Jimenez. Jimenez? I've never heard of her. I don't know, Abby. <laughs> tell us, Abby. Just tell right me. In, man. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm blind guessing here, okay? Okay? But I'm, she wants to read your books. So. Yes, I'm going to read one of her books. Um, I she's love. super popular, too. Yeah, she's she's gotten really popular, like within the last year or so. On the book talks. On the book talks. Book talk is just where it's at. Like they are just giving these authors like all the romance has the publicity ripped through. Yeah. Book talk like a sword. Through. Yeah, it's like the um, what's the guy that comes when you're dead? The Grim Reaper, and he's just, just got his like scythe, and he's just like. Whoosh, whoosh, yeah. whoosh. I was thinking of like the show Force and Fire. Have you ever seen it? Uh, yes. I love that show. And when they're, <laughs> well, like, they testing like, the knives the, and they're yeah. going through, like, pig. And he's like, <laughs> My dad used to watch that. And he'd, he'd watch, like, all the episodes. I and I'm just like, that. what? why are we watching this? Dude, that's my show, man. I have seen it four or five times. I love Forge and Fire. It's my favorite. That's hilarious. You're thinking of the Grim Reaper and I'm already thinking Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> Oh, and also, um, why we're here, we should mention that we are going on a little vacay. Um, so we oh, yeah. will be back, let me tell you. Do, 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 do. Of course, my my thing's like, you must log in. You must do nothing but log in. And Did you have to change your password again? Yeah. So yeah, Beth Ann is just yeeting out of the country. Um, For two weeks. I am not going to be gone that long, but I'm going to be gone the week after she gets back. So you we're just going to take a little. A month. Yeah, we're just going to take a little vacation. A little breaky, breaky. Um. So my planner. There we go. So sorry. We will be back in. So this episode, um, you guys are listening to on the 27th? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, 27th. And we will be back on June 27th. So we will be back in July on July 31st. That is, or sorry, no. July 25th is when you will hear our next episode. So it's going to be about a month, guys. Don't cry. This okay. is when you take all the book recommendations that yes. I've been giving you and read them. This is the time to start 18 books. We okay? have, this is like episode, what, 134 or something like that? Yeah. So we have at least 134 books. <laughs> at least. And we <laughs> that you can read multiple things in, in each episode. This is your time to shine. Summer reading program is happening right now. Open up your books, read your stuff, come in for your your prizes, get your streaks going, okay? And, you know, do the things. Be at the library. Listen, listen guys, do you want to come to the summer? Splish, splash, 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 splishy, splash, bash? Splishy, splash, bash. (laughs) Well, let me tell you what you have to do. You have to read. Read. Streak every day. Read something every day. Just sit down, crack open your book, give yourself 10 minutes. Yes. And it's free 99. Free 99. Free 99. You have to pay nothing, not a zilch. And that is why. And guess what? You don't even have to pay for the splishy splash splash final bash. Exactly. You just need to read. Read. And you get free things, man. Yes. And also, like, if you forget to read one day, it's fine. Guess what? You can come to a program. And we have programs every day for you, your kiddos. Maybe there's, like, a get out of jail free card on there. I'm not sure. (laughs) Nobody's throwing you in jail. (laughs) Yes. Not yet. Not yet, but we, but we will if you we find if out you don't read reading when we get back. We're gonna we're gonna contact the authorities and we're gonna say yeah. go arrest these guys because they're not reading their books. That's right, and that's what we're gonna do on our vacation. It's search you out and arrest you for not reading. Exactly. Actually, we're not. But we're not. But you guys, peer pressure, peer pressure. You guys are gonna miss us. We know it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Doug. <laughs> it's alright. Hang on for us. Lori, it's We'll be back. We'll be back, we promise. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be a wild month, but you know what? We're gonna be back we can fresh, do this. brand new, July twenty fifth. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. 
don't miss our very, very special episode of where we talk about a book. But um, <laughs> and we hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Oh, I would like to talk about my book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You literally said, no, no, this was, this was Bethany. I'm not going to talk about I this said, book. I said, I'm not going to talk about it until you're done talking about your books. Oh, I you thought. You introduced it and then you went back to talk about your book and then I thought we were going to go back and talk about them. You said, I'm not going to talk about this because I'm going to wait and talk about it for a full episode. No, I didn't. I did not say that. Guys. <laughs> I said, I'm going to wait to talk about it until after we're done introducing them. I was just kidding. This is actually April, April Fool's. <laughs> Beth Ann's going to talk about her book, and then we're going to be like, bye. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so my book is Someone You Can Build a Nest In by John Wish... Wiz... Wiz what? Wise what? Wiz Khalifa. (laughs) (laughs) It's W-Y-S-W-E-L-L. I will let you know that the um, narrator in the audiobook is very British. Very, very, very British. British. Yes. Heavy on the British. Um, But here's the synopsis. Um, Shisheshin. Whoa. Yeah. Has made a mistake fatal to all monsters. She's fallen in love. Shisheshin is a shapeshifter who happily resides as an amorphous lump in the swamp of a ruined manor. When her rest is interrupted by impolite monster hunters she constructs a body fit for devouring by reabsorbing the remains of past meals a metal chain for a backbone borrowed bones for limbs and a bear trap for an extra mouth after one incident goes badly Shisheshin's nursed back to health by homily a warm-hearted human who has mistaken Shisheshin for a fellow human homily would make an excellent co-parent an ideal place to lay Shisheshin's eggs so their young could devour homily from the inside out but as they grow close, she realizes humans don't think about love that way. Shusheshin is about to confess her identity when Homily reveals that she's hunting a shape-shifting monster who supposedly cursed her family. Dun, dun, dun. Eating her girlfriend isn't an option. Shusheshin didn't curse anyone, but to give herself and Homily a chance at happiness, she must discover why Homily's twisted family thinks she did, and the bigger challenge remains, surviving her toxic in-laws long enough to learn to build a life with rather than in the love of her life. Okay. I just want you to, I needed to show you what I was picturing this entire time. Oh, no. So did you ever, did you watch Teen Titans? Yeah. Do you remember the episode where Starfire gets betrothed to Gurgle's Clutch? Yeah. <laughs> this. Oh no. Is what I was picturing. I picture that too. The Shishishin. <laughs> Um, oh my gr- gosh, gurgle, a- gurgle splutch. It's just a lump, a green gr- lump. Yes, um, that is what that was giving. So I I picture Shishashin more, less of a she and more of an it, because she's a monster. <laughs> and like, it's really interesting because like, you can tell really early on in the story that she is trying to navigate human emotion and she's trying to figure out like how to fit in. And she starts feeling all of these different feelings about building a life that she's never felt before because she's always been alone, living in her weird, you know, dilapidated manner with her pet grizzly bear blueberry. And so it's just interesting how, like, she falls into this, like, unknown situation with Homily. And I'm at, a, I'm at such a sad part. Like, I know this is going to end in, like, disaster. Like, somebody's going to die. Like, somebody's going to die. There's going to be this huge twist. Somebody's going to die. Well, she's, gonna eat, be she's eating her girlfriend, isn't she? Well, she she's wants like, to lay eggs in her lungs. Oh, okay. All right. Which, like, it's not really a romance. It sounds romancy, but it's not really a romance. I really thought you were going to be like, it's not weird. It's like, not weird. If you think about it, <laughs> it's, it's not, not weird. weird. No, it's absolutely weird. It's weird. It's creepy. It's eerie. It's very, like... Oh, I don't know, but it get, it gives Murderbot vibes. If you've ever read Martha Wells' Murderbot series, Murderbot is obviously this um, killing machine that's built out of um, like machine AI and like human like bits, and they're not really a human and they're not really a robot. 
so they have to try to figure out like human emotions and like why humans react the way that they do, why they make the faces that they do, why do they choose the things that they choose and why they love the way that they love. And it really does match those things inside Shisheshin's head. And so like hearing her internal monologue about how like Homily makes this face and like drags her hands across her face. And at one point she's just like, she's dragging her hands across her face and I'm not sure like what her reaction is, but before I could help her rip her own eyes out, she started talking like, it's just this weird, like, I don't know. I just really love navigating Shisheshin as a main character. And I really love it for Shisheshin. I'm really rooting for the villain here. Gurgle Sletch. Gurgle Sletch. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> so I think you guys should definitely read it. This is not YA. This is science fiction fantasy um, adult. And it came out this year. Hmm. So this is a brand new one. It's very I like popular. the cover. Yeah, the cover's pretty great. This is obviously homily. Um, and then that's Shushesh. Uh, cute. <laughs> Super cute. Um, and so it's very unconventional. And it's not really something that I probably would have picked up on my own had Justin not recommended it to me. But it's just really, it's just really good. Like the back says, wriggly, heartfelt, and carnivorous. Um, the coziest, most unexpectedly wholesome love story about a monster who devours humans and wears their bones. Like, it's cute. just... It's heartwarming. Yeah. Yeah. What did Trisha say? It was it razor blade tears or something like that? Which one did she say in the meeting where like uh, some guy gets tossed and yeah. chip she's like, it's just the most heart blade tears. Felt it. Like I love it for it's them. It's giving that. It's giving that. And I really want to see like how it turns out, like how they come back from this because Shisheshin is this weird monstrous thing that has lived forever and then Horrifying, but so cute. Yeah. Horrifying, but cute. And, no, I'm glad that Beth Ann got to talk about her book. Because... Yeah, because Samantha's gonna end the podcast and leave me hanging! You wouldn't even got to know the book! This is actually... This, this, I don't want to tell you like this, but you're actually getting fired from the podcast. Are you replacing me with Ben? Yeah. It's B and S. We don't even have to change the B. (laughs) How dare you! Just oh, kidding. Benny. Just kidding. She's not kidding. When you, when you come back, it's going to be Ben on the podcast. I'm going to give Ben that book and I'm going to tell him to read it. Yeah, because you're replacing me. Yeah. All right. Uh-huh. Well, we'll see you guys on the next episode um, <laughs> with Ben and Samantha. <laughs> I'm so sad. All right, guys. We hope you have a great rest of your week and we will see you. Well, we will. We will talk to you on You'll July. Hear us. You will hear us. In July. In July. Bye. Bye.